doing a gear change on the Firebird here, bringing up the speed. Um, took the axles out, uh, had to pop the C-clips out for that. I'll go over how to do that when we reinstall it. <clears throat> Mark the uh, the main caps on it. You want to put those back in the same direction. And there's a main cap. You can see I described a D in it. Here's the shim that was with it. There's the other one. I'm going to keep the shims with them. Let me put it back together. Went ahead and took the old ring gear off. You could see um, a couple of teeth were pretty pitted from rust. So, changing out the gears, putting the same gear ratio back in with the Summit gear set. And also noticed. Here's one of the carrier bearings after it was pressed off. You can see this bearing was toast, severe pitting in the rollers of the bearing. So I pressed off the carrier bearings, pressed off the gear, pressed the new gear on, and that's where we're at. Um, note with this is if you keep your carrier in the press, it's a lot easier to torque down all your ring gear bolts. Loctite was put on those, those were torqued to 65 foot pounds. Also, when you're installing the ring gear, you should make sure there's no burrs on the back edge of it or on the the face of the carrier that meets the ring gear. You want to make sure that that thing is sitting on there flat so you don't have any run out. I'm going to be pressing this bearing onto the carrier right there. And to do that, to push on the inside of the bearing. So what I did is I found an old piece of a bearing and I opened up the inside so it would fit over the end of the carrier and it also lines up perfectly with the inside of the bearing. That way it won't damage the bearing when I press it on. See that the carrier actually sticks out a little bit above the bearing. Here I'm taking the pinion nut off with the carrier removed. With the pinion removed, I'm going to go ahead and remove the seal with a seal puller. Since the installation kit came with a new one. And take out the front barrier. I drive out this outer race. Put this side up here. Try to go with the inner race with a pin punch. And I'm gonna give another shot at setting this race home. This 
front race is the same type of deal. Make sure you got it all cleaned up in there. And then you send that home. And then you want to inspect it and make sure it's fully seated. Now you can see if my bearing separator on my pinion bearing on the old uh, pinion gear. I'm going to press it off. I'm going to do this for two reasons. One is I want to use this old bearing for checking purposes. And two is I want the shim out of there. I'm going to start uh, with that shim. Using the separator is much like how I got the bearings off the carrier. shim that was installed at the factory. What I've done here is I've carefully chunked up the old bearing and the vise with a spacer behind it. And I'm going to go ahead and take my die grinder with a sandpaper roll on it and open this bearing up. That way it'll uh, easily slide on and off the new pinion uh, without pressing it. It's strictly for checking purposes. And here is the factory shim that was on the original gear, on the new pinion gear. And you can see that the bearing slides right on there without a press now. So if my checking distance is off or if the, uh, the tooth contact pattern looks bad, I can simply just take it apart and switch shims. What this shim does here is it actually controls pinion depth. <coughs> it's how far the uh, pinion meshes into the ring gear is that this bearing is a tight fit also. It's actually not a press fit though. So I'm going to open up the original uh, bearing there as well. And probably don't need to say this, but whenever you're doing any kind of grinding like that or using a sandpaper roll, make sure all your good stuff is way far away from that and try and keep it all as clean as possible. One more note is I'm probably going to install the seal after I come up with my uh, my finished shim for the pinion. No need to uh, pass the pinion back and forth on that seal. Okay, I have my mock set. I'll put it in the rear end with no crush sleeve. Just got her snugged up in there. And uh, this thing you see in here is the Mark Williams pinion depth checking tool. And according to that thing, that factory shim um, is just about perfect. It's within the thousandths of an inch. I've taken several measurements uh, rotating the pinion. After I put the gears together, I'm going to go ahead and check the uh, tooth contact pattern with marking compound to make sure that we have the correct depth. I put the yoke on there and set bearing preload. And I put the axles and drums back in, set the parking brake so there's resistance on it. And here's the pattern I'm getting. The concave side is the coast side. You can see the pattern is a little up on the inside. The convex side is the drive side. You can see it's on the outside. This tells me the pinion is too shallow. So I'm going to add a shim and hopefully uh, we hit it. So here's our current contact pattern. Um, we added 10, it wasn't enough. We added five and we went too much. You can see on the drive side, she's actually towards the inside. On the coast, she's a little on the uh, little on the outside. So we're gonna take two thousandths out of this and see how she looks. So here's our tooth contact pattern. Now you can see the drive side is hitting a good portion of tooth, a little bit towards the inside, and the coast side is a little bit towards the inside, but hitting a good good portion of the tooth. Um, we went from ten over on the factory shim to fifteen over. It's too much. Then we went down to 13, it wasn't enough, and then this is at 14. And this is as good as it's going to get. Now that we've determined how many shims we need, we've got to have, we have a good pattern. I'm going to take my checking bearing off, and I'm going to go ahead and press on the bearing I'm going to use and hope that uh, the pattern comes out good when we put this on there. Because once you put this on, it's pretty tough to get it off without messing it up. And in case you're wondering, um, here's the original shim. Here's the 10 and here's the 4 that we're going to add. And uh, all combined it comes out to about between 
51 and 52 uh, thousandths of an inch. And it's amazing how much uh, thousandths of an inch adjustment on the shim makes for your wear pattern. Nice. Oh, you think that's something? Why should I have safety glasses on? Okay, can you take it off there? Check it. Okay, you saw how ridiculous that was. It got some on it there. Now we're going to check the rotating torque uh, on this pinion with the beam type gauge. We're looking for 20 to 25 inch pounds on a new setup. Right now we're still under 20. All right, now we're checking backlash here. Um, you always want to check your your pattern when you have good backlash and good pinion depth. Um, you see, I have a magnetic base set up. I've got an indicator on there. You like your to have your indicator at a 90 degree angle to the tooth, if possible. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hold the pinion and I'm going to go back and forth with the ring gear. Whatever read you get in the needle movement is what your backlash is. So here's our final pattern. This was checked under load. And there's the drive side. Here's the passenger side. It's about as good as you're going to get. Well, I'm going to put the axis back in. So take the center pin out, uh, back out, so the axis can slide in far enough so I can get the C clip onto it. I went old school with this axle by painting a line on it. That way you can check for twists on it. So you basically to replace soles, you would pop the seals out. And a trick to uh, getting the bearing out is actually putting a tube through the whole axle. A piece of counter works good. And you can pound it off from the opposite side. And then you just uh, you tap on the new bearings. So I'm going to go ahead and slide my axle in now. Be careful not to damage the seal. all the way with it so I can get my C-clip on. Here's the infamous C-clip. Uh, this thing breaks or malfunctions, your axle can walk right out of your rear end housing. I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. And I'm going to pull the axle out. That's what holds the C-clip in place. I'm going to put the pin back in. That'll prevent the axle from moving inward, releasing the C-clip out with the C-clip. I'm going to go ahead and put this pin back in to keep the axles from walking inwards. Make sure your holes lined up. Okay, we got the uh, rear end filled up with fluid and I suppose I should talk about the braking procedure. You're supposed to drive around for like 10 miles and like completely cool down a few times uh, before you really start hammering on the thing. So that's what we're going to do here. Here's the old ring gear. Uh, you can see all the pitting on the tooth there. And uh, yeah, I'm going to show you what I think of this thing. You almost hit, uh, hit your car.